definitely join us here tonight. She is um, 75 kilograms, I believe, the middleweight division in the amateurs. And she definitely had a dope ass performance in the Olympics, getting to the quarterfinals. And we're definitely proud of her. She represented the country well. So we're pleased to have, man, Tamara Tebow on the show, joining us on the way in for the first time. How hey. are you doing, Tamara? I'm good. How are you guys? That's good, man. We tracked you down, man. Glad to have you on the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been a crazy couple last couple of months. Not gonna oh, lie. I could imagine everybody's excited to have you back and, you know, see you and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of people to visit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. So what we do normally for your first time on the show, just give people just a brief, brief background. Where are you from and how you got started in the sport of boxing? OK, so basically my story is a little complicated because my dad was an athlete, so he had to travel a lot. But okay. my parents, by the age of 21, they had three children. So <laughs> they were just kind of hauling us back and forth yeah. throughout the country. Cause, but um, I was born in Quebec. I grew up, I was a couple of years in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and then I was mostly raised in Saskatchewan. And then in 2012, I moved back to Quebec where um, I am centralized now. So, and my family's back here with me. But I started boxing when I was in Saskatchewan when I was nine years old. So I've been boxing for a little bit now. <laughs> and uh, fast forward a couple of years later, and here we are post Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> And listen, speaking of the Olympics, how was that experience? Hold Your on, first Greg, time and like, Greg, huh? no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I got to know how it was in Saskatchewan, man. Hold <laughs> on, you, you got to give me a little insight. How was it growing up in Saskatchewan? Let the people know. <laughs> uh, well, to be honest, I was used to it, right? Because like most of my most of my friends in elementary school were there, and it's like a small it's a small community. It's like it's a city, but it's not really. It's a small community, and um, I loved it. To be honest, like I loved it. It's freaking cold in the winter like it gets cold i mean really? like oh my god <laughs> oh my god it gets cold but the summers are beautiful the people are so nice and like it's relatively safe you know what i mean like nowadays you can't do this but you know like my siblings i we like running you know nine o'clock we'd be running all over the place kind of and we'll come back for lunch and then be out again until dinner and then out again after that so yeah. I loved it. I loved it. And I love the boxing club because the boxing club, it was, um, it was first founded in 1949. So it was like old and stinky and hot with no air conditioning, but I loved it. Like it was the best place in the world for me. I loved it there. Uh, it should be. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's that, that, <laughs> that, that's amazing. Greg, one more before you get your question up. One more. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Sam, I want to know, can you uh, just tell us real quick, um, what was that fight or fighter that got you into loving boxing? And it's on you next, Greg. Uh, for me, it was my dad. <laughs> so my yeah. dad, he was a football player. And then when I was about, yeah, when I was about like nine, eight or nine years old, my dad, he started, he, he left the, the CFL and, uh, you know, he's competitive. So we went to this town called Swift Current and my dad was boxing. It was one of his first fights. And I remember just kind of watching, watching, and then I saw my dad knock this guy out like cold. <laughs> like, you know, when they fall down like a tree, which is like, boof. Yeah. I was like, for me, I was like, this like nine year old girl, I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I was like, I wanna yeah. do that. <laughs> like, that was my reflex. I was like, I don't know what that is. I was like, but I wanna learn how to do that. I wanna feel that, like, feel that powerful. You know what I mean? I wanna have yeah. that ability. Okay. So far, <laughs> we, have, we haven't really gotten there. I'm not gonna lie, like it's not it's harder than it looks. <laughs> you know Back, what I mean? Yeah. Especially like on the like on the level I'm at right now. Yeah. I mean, at this point, it's not even a question of who has more talent, who's better, so who's having a better day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what it comes down to because the level we're at, everybody has talent. Everybody, you know what I mean? But mm. and everybody works hard, or else you wouldn't be there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. Yeah. I know this. Like I know that the girls I'm competing against are training hard for the most part. Um, and I know that it takes a lot more than just a couple fights, you know. So my dad's the one who got me into boxing. He's the one that was like made me go like, wow. And then, you know, there's Muhammad Ali, then and then Sugar Ray Leonard and all those, you know, those incredible athletes I saw. And they had they had this, I don't know, this like this sauce, you know, this mojo about them. I was like, I want that. And that's what I love about boxing. It's like you know, people would say, like, who don't know boxing would say, oh, it's violent. Oh, it's like, um, it's dangerous. But like, mm. what you see 
in boxing is you see people's character, their personalities shine through their style. And that's what makes every boxer unique. It's because you see who they are. And that's what I love about the sport. Yeah, that's great. You're right about that, man. Definitely personality shines through for sure. Right. So listen, tell us about your Olympic experience, man. Because we were definitely following you. And listen, we're proud of you. Definitely. Um, just being an Olympian is an amazing thing, man. But tell us how it was, you know, being over there. What are some of the challenges you had? And um, just how was it just fighting at the Olympics? How was it? Um, It was strange. I'm not going to lie. It was strange because, okay. like, you think of the Olympics, you're like, oh, wow, it's going to be, like, incredible right yeah. but for me it felt like it was just another tournament and maybe it's because like there was no there was no spectators it was like it was very like it's very it was small i felt like it was small the only difference i i found was the olympic rings everywhere because you know anyways we were told you know we can't really be with other countries we got to stay in our own bubble and it's like um, we had to go it's like to the room, to the training center, back to the room, to the dining hall, and it was in and out. Like, you know, it was, it was very strict. So I found it really strange. But my favorite part about being there was being in the ring again. Uh, it was a long 18 months without fighting and stuff. But I was really, really, really excited to be back in the ring again. And I remember, like, winning my first fight, and I was like, all right. I was like, yes. I was like, okay, we're on a roll. And the second fight I had in the quarterfinals is a fight I really wanted. I know, like... <laughs> Keep losing this damn girl. <laughs> no, frustrating that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a fight I really wanted, and you know, like uh, I feel like, like I'm proud of the process. I'm yeah. so disappointed with the outcome. Uh, I'm I'm really sad. Uh, people don't really talk about that. The uh, like after the Olympics, like you live kind of like a like a down because like for I don't know for four years, five years, or ten years, or however long you train for the Olympics, like you have that reason to get up, and then when it's over, you're like it's over you know what I mean? you're like yeah. you go yeah. home and nothing has changed that's the biggest thing for me because i was really hoping the medal like i thought i had i feel i still feel like i have all the potential uh to go all the way and uh i guess you know there's still a couple things i need to learn before i get there and i'm okay with that but i'm really sad like i'm sad because i felt like i don't know something like i i understand the mistakes that i've made and i know that i don't want to repeat those mistakes but man, so let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me, I'm gonna interrupt you right there. I'm gonna interrupt you right there because I'm all about giving. It's Francis, by the way. I'm all about giving flowers with people their flowers while they can smell it. It don't matter when it is. I gotta. I had you beating that girl. Now let me keep it a hundred. Now I gotta keep it a buck. She was cheating, in my opinion. Matter of fact, the referees, Greg. Didn't I tell you the whole referees with the whole Olympics was was a bother to me? I feel like they was cheating. I mean. That punch she hit you after the after the clinch or after the break, I think she hit you right on the on, on the button. That yeah. one right there was a change. She cheated, and you still brought it to her like tooth and nails. And she knew when she hit you like that, she kept hitting you on the break. She kept kind of hit you on the break. The referees right there, break clean, boom. She's trying to hit you. It's yeah, yeah. Not like you were getting in your head, but you was already beating her. She couldn't take your power. You was hitting her and she was reacting to it. So she was reacting with her cheating ways. I had you beating this girl. I don't know what these judges were seeing, man. To be honest, though, like, that's the thing is I like, was I'm surprised. Fuck, and I understand the Olympic scene and stuff like that. But, yeah, go ahead. Oh, the, the, the Olympics are so, pro like, I mean, I feel anyways. And I, I don't even think it's, I don't even think it's a secret. They're pro-European. And the reason why is most of the judges are European or they see these European girls all the time, all, all over. And if they don't see me, like I was 18 months out of the ring, they don't, they haven't seen me since world championships, essentially. You know what I mean? Like in right. 2019. So they don't see me. So they're pro-European for sure. And you have, and being a Canadian, you have to take, you have to do more. Like you have to, like, I feel like that is what ha it has been like forever. Like I always had to do more. Like I always had to. Like, if I didn't have a unanimous decision, I felt like I was never going to get the split decision, ever. Like, if it was a tough fight, I had to, for me to win, I had to dominate these girls. And even sometimes, like, even when I fought Kazakhstan, it was no way a split decision. Right. But they had me winning by split decision, right? Just because she's from Kazakhstan, because that that name bears a lot of weight. And right. I, I don't I don't feel like that's fair, but it's the reality of the sport. And so it just kind of, it's just kind of something I got to live with. And moving forward, like, you gotta make sure that I do better. And what surprised me the most is like even in my in 
against the Netherlands, I felt strong. Like it was weird because I fought her before and I didn't feel as strong. And now this time I was fighting her and I felt like my punches were bothering her. So I was like, oh shit, okay, I can hold my ground against this girl. My punches was you know bothering I mean? everybody. I'm telling you. Yeah, that, man. <laughs> you touch, even that same girl in the last, when you touching her, like she is, if she's not trying to be on her bicycle, she's trying to hold you on some type of illegal right. way. And I'm watching, I'm like, Greg, like, what is going on? Like this referee, and, and every time the admonishment would come for you. When you weren't oh, yeah. doing the cheating. So I'm like, what is going on over here? You're not even giving her an opportunity to every time you, you try to get off, break, 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 break it up. Break. What are you doing? What are you doing? You gotta let them fight. Then then when she's doing the cheating, you're allowing her to hold your head and she's punching you. And you're like, break, break. She's already taking punches. Now, what are you guys doing, man? Is this boxing? So for me, oh, I felt like you was doing what you was doing and and, and you you won that fight to me, in my opinion. I don't care nobody yeah. feel I'm I'm gonna stand with, I'm gonna rock with it. Thanks. <laughs> it makes it feel yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't it. it was cheating. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not gonna lie. Like when we got back from the Olympics, I needed to do like a, a full reset. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I had yeah. to do like I had to do a reassessment of my life. I was like, okay, <laughs> now what? I was like, okay, now what do we do? You know what I mean? Right. But now that it's like, now that I like, um, I've taken that time off, I cannot wait to be back in the gym. Like I've seen like, even like watching other sports compete, like athletics compete. I'm like, okay, they're competing already. I was like, man, I gotta get back out there. Like just being there has made me feel like, okay, I want to keep going. Like, I don't want to stop. Like I want to be as active as possible. I want to, like, I want to, I want to be part of the, I want to be part of the greats. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I feel like in her own time, Clarissa Shields has made a change of sport for women. Like, uh, Clarissa Shields, Katie Taylor, I felt like they changed the sport in amateur in amateur boxing for, for women. And what they did was incredible. But I want to do that in my own way. You know what right. I mean? Like, I know like I'm a tall, slick southpaw, and I want to exploit that. Because the real talent is not just having that talent. The real talent is to be able to exploit or exploit that, that, that talent, that potential that you have. And that's what I want to do. And I want people to, I want people to know that I'm coming. You know what I mean? Like, Okay, yeah. it wasn't my year. But I want people to know that I'm coming. I want I want to make a difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is it safe to say that um you you're saying here you're going to be back for 2024 since it's kind of a short turnaround. The next Olympics won't be, you know, 4 years away. I guess 3 years. You're going to be back for that? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be back for 2024. Okay, and then we'll cool. see and then we'll see what happens with professional boxing. Yeah. Cuz um there's a couple girls that I'd like to beat that are pro or going to be pro so i want to okay. do that for me like i don't I, like i said like i don't want to be it might be far-fetched but you know dream big or go home right and uh, go. go big or go home yeah so i want there's a couple girls i want to beat maybe in the professional ranks at some point uh i feel like i i have a lot more to give and uh i'm gonna be great i don't know when i don't know how yet but i'm gonna be great i'm gonna be i want to be one of the greats i want to be i want to be in the hall of fame i want that's what i want I love that, man. Me and Francis talk all the time about inspiring the next generation or whoever's coming up behind you. And listen, you you are like the perfect person for that right now. So definitely, um, yeah, you're going you're gonna to be the best. I can see that already. And that's another person that you got who said that you want it hands down. You know, shout out to Sports for Life that watch it. So I'm telling you, if those don't tell you that's right, they crazy, man. They crazy. You got to tell the truth, man. Now, if you lost, I would have told you like, yo, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. I didn't feel like you did this. I'm keeping it a buck with you. But that's another story for another day. Um, I want to tell you to do me, do us a favor. Introduce your team to us. Your current team. I'm not going to lie to you guys. My team right now is a damn mess. <laughs> uh, it's a little complicated. Um, you see, we've been going through a transition right. the last 18 months, and we are still transitioning. So when I find out, I'll let you know. Because <laughs> right, right now we're in between coaches. Um, uh, but we have, I mean, like I have a nutritionist, I have a, phys a physio, I have a sports psychologist, I have, I have, like, I still talk to my old coach, like my coach, like I, like we're not supposed to, I guess, but fuck it, who, 
from I mean, excuse me. I mean, every, no, no, people, listen, it's the way people, people talk, know. But for, for me, my coach will always be Zhao. He got let go from the national team in 2020. But for me, you know, like I still talk to him. We still call call each other uh, and stuff. But um, oh, Francis is upset. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man, we we hear so much stuff about Canada and the system and the. It's just, we, it's just, we're, we're transition. I don't know what's going on. We're transitioning. I mean, like. To yeah. be honest, there's some good things, there's some bad things. Um, yeah. But like for me, I just try to mind. Like what I try to do is I just try to spread like positive, like a positive mindset and positivity. Uh, for me, like I said, Jao is my coach. Like in my heart, he's my coach. When we travel and when we are in the centralization and stuff, it's different. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And my parents, like my mom, is pretty much my manager, so she handles a lot of business for me. Shout yeah, out to my momager. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like, you don't see that. That's rare. Like, I love that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That the whole team coming together. Now, I understand. Um, I, I would assume, and this is me guessing, that part of the, the transition that's still going on is going from the centralized system and their processing and how they go through their processing. Is that safe to say? Yeah, because essentially, I mean, I was in the first, like when the centralization first started in 2017, like they told us in the get go, listen, this is uh, this is the start. You know what I mean? We're going to make mistakes and we're just going to adjust. And so I'm aware of that and I'm aware that is a new program, but there are so many benefits that come from a centralization. Honestly. Talk to us. Um, so for one, the services we get. The services we get are incredible. So neuro tracking, physio, uh, we get uh, strength training. We get um, we get a doctor that we have access to all the time. Uh, we get free education, post secondary education. Um, I don't know if you know, but that makes a huge difference. Like I'm oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an advocate for school. I'm in university. I'm just about to finish my bachelor's. And one of the biggest things for me that's helped me out is if I could take anything away from my boxing career is that I was able to finish my bachelor's, and it cost me nothing. Perfect. Right. And I mean, if that's, that's the bare minimum. Right. So uh, for me, that's a win. Uh, we have, listen, we have the facility we have is so nice. And that's why I'm, I hope that in the future, uh, you'll see more of different countries come in because our facility is so nice. Like we have a great setup. Um, we have all the tools we need. Now it's time to put the pieces together. And I think right. that's where we're having a, a harder time is putting the pieces together because well, frankly, I don't know, but <laughs> and it, that seems to be a little bit more difficult. But I hope that in the future we'll be able to get our shit together. You know what I mean? Because mm. uh, we need a couple medals, and I feel like we have the potential to to, to grab them. No, no, no. We got the potential. Yeah, that, that, that yeah. B- bountiful of a potential. It's just about things working out the way that they're supposed to. Right. I, I'm I'm not even gonna get into that with you because this ain't got nothing to do with you. But what I do want to get into though is is talk to us a little bit about um that black girl power. Oh <laughs> okay, so uh I don't know what I don't know. Okay, I, I might have like a weird standing on this. Maybe it's because I'm mixed. <laughs> uh but I was raised in a very diverse community. And the, I felt like for me, the color of my skin had very little impact. And it wasn't until I grew older that I realized what actually of importance it did have on people who look up to me. Did you know I was the first, I am the first black woman to go to the Olympics for Canada in boxing? <laughs> Come on. I, I, I know, but for me, like when I was told <laughs> that, I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, oh yeah. I was like, that's pretty cool, right? Because I, yeah. what I, I like is that, like, you know, and I think that, um, like, I don't realize the impact that I have on these on these little girls who look up to me, who are whether whether they're black, white, facts, a- Asian, whatever, right? Yeah. For me, I feel like what's important is the content of my character, and that's where. And when it comes to when it comes to the color of my skin or my ethnicity, and and uh, I guess conflict between those types of things. I feel like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X had it right, right? Martin Luther King's most famous quote, and I feel like people forget that, is that he wants us to be, he wanted us to be judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. 
And I feel like the more people are breaking barriers, no, regardless of their skin, regardless of their ethnicity, I feel like we're going in the right direction. I think that um, me, especially me being mixed, I feel like it shows that anything is possible, right? My mom is Haitian, my dad is French Canadian. And she, I mean, he is white, like he has blonde, blue eyes. My mom has <laughs> dark skin, like really dark eyes. And they both taught me that, you know what? It doesn't matter. Like, um, unfortunately, the things will be uh, unfair for you. But what you can do is prove those people wrong by continuing to break ba barriers and by kind of and by pushing your limits and by showing them that no matter what you want to do, you can achieve that. So. I love now go ahead, Francis. I love it. I'm just taking it all in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what yeah. we're talking about here. We're. Right here on the way in, y'all smash the thumbs up button. First of all, hit the subscribe button. Second of all, definitely hit the bell icon to become part yeah. of the notification gang. Because you're going to miss a great one like this. This is greatness in the building. I started off the show by saying, we got greatness in the building. Yeah. And you're seeing it live. And if you ain't seen it live, watch the replay. Don't play yourself. Um, I want to know from you, how has the support been since you've gotten home? How has Canada embraced you and lifted you up? I feel like for me, my day one, I know who my day ones are. You know what I mean? I know who's really there. And I am just amazed by the support I got. I, I've gotten from my friends, my family. And it's incredible. Like I have, like, I live a pretty happy life. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, I don't know. I'm speechless. I have, you know what? Hold up. Hold up. I'll be right back. I got to show you guys something. No, no, no. I have to. Hold on. This is all so, the way, baby. Only. I'm telling y'all, man. Y'all tap in, baby. We get, we live, man. We got greatness. Go ahead. So, so I had my, my friends, one of my close friends, playing yeah. a party for me the other day, right? And he got his mom to draw a picture that I posted. Ooh, hold on. Let me get closer. Yeah. Ooh. That's a picture I posted on my social media. Yeah. And she took amazing. the time to draw, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, to, to draw it for me, just to give you an idea. And I'm I'm kind of a I'm kind of a softie, so you know <laughs> <laughs> might have shed a few tears. <laughs> but Fire. like just just things like that that I've gotten yeah. since I've gotten since I've been home that have just been incredible. And I I'm really grateful for all the support because you know I have a, an amazing group of people who support me win or lose and that's all that matters yeah. that's right. all that matters because you know through it all man they can you can persevere you can look past it because you know you know it don't matter how the content of my character will always be loved <laughs> yo, you, yo you are fire man you are fire yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> another one that i gotta ask you is um what other sports did you play growing up well, I played basketball, obviously. I'm very tall. So I yes. played basketball to junior college. Um, I thought it was a good a good way to keep in shape while I was boxing. And then at some point, like I had to make a decision, right? Because I was kind of I was getting better at boxing and I wanted to I really wanted to pursue boxing. That was like my number one sport. But I played basketball and, and I boxed for a really, really long time. Uh, that's what's up, Trevor Thon. Shout out to Trevor in the building, man. Trevor Thonson, supposed to be uh, you know, competing for Jamaica. Unfortunately, never happened, but you know, um, great things looking ahead. Shout out to everybody who's supporting, you know, what I'm saying that's listening right now. We appreciate you. Now, you talked a little bit about you went from Saskatchewan to Quebec, right? Yeah, how was it when you went back? How was uh, how was it growing up at that point, that whole process leading up to now? Like, how was it? Uh, well, I really like Saskatchewan, but I think that it was coming back to Quebec was a blessing in disguise because the boxing scene is much better in Quebec and Ontario. So I had, I had a lot more opportunities. So, and I mean, we created our, our new life here and we met new people and we were close to the family because my family is French Canadian. So I think it was a blessing in disguise when, I mean, when I was 15, I, and then my parents told me to move in. I kicked down the, the for sale sign <laughs> just to give you an idea. <laughs> straight up. I think for like a week straight, I kept going. I kept taking it off. My mom had to sit me down and say, you got to stop doing that, honey. <laughs> I was very upset. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm here because it gave me opportunities I wouldn't have had otherwise. 
I love it. Greg, bro. you got one? You know, I actually wanted to ask you, let us know about Tam's Corner. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, if you don't mind. It's catchy, right? Yeah, yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, my, my mom came up with that one. Okay. <laughs> my mama Jer. Mama Jer? Uh, we looking, mama Jer. Yeah. yeah. No, we were looking for to build a website because I feel like in the world we in the world we live in, our image uh, plays a big role, you know what I mean, and social media and all that. And I wanted to create a platform where people could get to know me a little. That's why, like, you know, we have Tam's Corner because I'm a boxer and, you know, being in my corner. But also... Right. Um, to I kind of let people in like what I like like you know what I mean I'm I am a boxer yes but I am also many other things and uh I think that being authentic is probably one of the most important qualities at least for me and so I just want to let people in you know let them see who I am a little bit that's why uh we like to show diverse like I like to show diverse things and what I'm interested in and since he's you know, you never know how many people you can reach or how many people you can influence. And I feel like, you know, I want people to know that I'm a person who likes different things and I have yeah. tons of ambitions. I swear me and Francis were like basically <laughs> describing you with what we were talking about, like before we went on air, man. Exactly. Yo, Greg, hold on. You got hold on. You know I got to do this, man. I got to get all my... You yeah. gotta get off this out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you don't really want your target, shop. Okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm chilling now. <laughs> Yo, I love this, man, because you know, it, it's this is what we're talking about. I personally, I love when fighters talk that talk, man. This is the fight business, man. This is the fight game. You be respectful, but talk that talk. If you can do it, you talk it, man. And I feel like you are so grounded. You know what you want. You know what I mean? Tell us what's the future plans. And then I got to give you my world famous questions. What's your future plans that you got going on? My future plan is landing that gold medal in Paris and nothing less. That is what I want. Like I, I'll be there. I, I, I got the potential to do it. Now I was just trying to make this little adjustment and get there. Like that's my goal. Like I ain't leaving Paris without a medal. I ain't leaving Paris without that one medal. That's Fuck. what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm gonna um, be, be there for sure. Yeah. Go and then, uh, and then also finish my bachelor's because I've been in school a really long time, and <laughs> frankly, I am sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> so those are my two plans. That's great. Well, we have come to that time. Yeah. That 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 amazing time where I get to put the guests on the show through some fun questions to finish off just before we get up out of here but for some reason there we go got my belt rocking um question number one is when you are running or doing your conditioning work in the gym what type of music are you listening to i listen to afro beats always <laughs> <laughs> i love me some afro beats <laughs> You know, it's funny because sometimes when I go to those Latin countries, like, you know, I've been the Canadian girl who like comes down, but when the party starts, you can like, where did you come from? <laughs> like, I just bust out and all, all the island girl comes out of me. I, yeah. swear. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So my ne my follow question is going to be, um, what is your pre-fight meal? Now, we're going to have a two-part to that. What is your, when you're competing in tournaments and stuff like that, what is your pre-fight meal? But what was your pre-fight meal in Tokyo? What was my pre-fight meal? So, I box in the after, so I basically, it depends where I'm at. Like, it depends where I'm at. We're never at the same place, but usually it'll be like a carb and a protein. Mm. Uh, but in Tokyo, I was boxing in the afternoon, so I always had breakfast. So I always had two slices of bread, four eggs, a bowl of fruit, and cookies, and a coffee. Mind you, I don't know why I had cookies, but I got cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I had cookies. There were good cookies out there, and I was like, yeah. fuck, I'm eating cookies. I was like, what the hell am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I had. That's amazing. Uh, what was what was your what is your post fight in your young career? 
guilty pleasure. Like I got to, I got to have it as soon as I get out the ring. French fries. I go for French fries all the time. I get, I go as soon as I'm out. I'm just, I go straight to the cafeteria. And I'm like, where your French fries at? Because I, I know they have French fries somewhere. I and love pizza. it. French fries, y'all. See, so a lot of people say pizza. They say burger, uh, chicken wings, and another one, Greg. French fries. French fries. Put it French on the list. Yeah. I love it. Now the next one I have is if you were a superhero. What would be your superhero power? Okay. In this superhero world, do other people have superpowers? Yeah. Okay. So it would be to be able to replicate everybody else's powers so I could have all of them. All right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. She yeah. wants to eat Anos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that is you get all the <laughs> Yeah, pick up everything. You could be invisible, you could tell you could stop time, you could fly, you could be strong. I would swipe up everybody's powers. I, yeah. <laughs> okay, I got two more. Two more. What is right. your favorite boxing drill that you like to do? I like hitting hand pads. Hitting pads. Like, that's yeah, a, that's pads. a good. A lot of people like they choose that with hitting pads. Yeah, what about yeah. pads is, is that you like? I like feeling the impact of my punches. Like you know when I land a solid punch, I could I could tell. I like feeling yeah. the impact of my punches. I love it. I love it. Now this one right here is another one I just you know Greg I I, I do it on the fly because I'm nice like yeah. that. Uh, this one is uh, sometimes you gotta toot your own horn. This one right here, because they be stealing my questions, man. I got, they be stealing my questions. This one, you be stealing my questions, man. Yeah, somebody, I, I see y'all, yeah. man. Y'all, come on, man. Y'all at least give me some credit, man. You steal my questions. Okay, I digress. Now, listen now. The one I want to ask you is um, the French fries, McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King. Hold on, Harvey's. What am I missing? I'm missing one. Home cut fries, fries. Or home cut, yeah, like like New York fries. Like oh, no, no. <laughs> what, the reason why I'm asking is like if you had to choose out of those like four or five establishments, what one would you go to? Like you're out. My first reflex would probably go to McDonald's. Uh, because they're the best fries when they're hot. But then my second choice would be Burger King, because they got cheese sticks over there. So you go grab some French fries and they got a little crispy thing on the top, which is really nice. Yeah. And then you grab some cheese sticks. <laughs> The marinara sauce, so, so yeah. <laughs> there you have it, man. There you have it. Thank you for you know what I'm saying going through these these questions here. And just before we get out of here, um, Greg, yeah, in boxing, you know what I'm saying it, it's all about uh, opportunities, right? And uh, Tam has had the opportunity to not only compete in the Olympic to get a medal, but the opportunity to get into a system to where she can advance her personal life by getting her you know schooling done. You know, I mean, at no cost, which is amazing while she works at her craft. That's a beautiful thing. You know, I mean, talk about at the same time, the transition between trainers and stuff, I feel like um, could I hope that settles itself soon because getting a a, a concrete team and system, I feel like will take your game to another level because now the level of work, the level of attention to you, because you again, I say to fighters, you are the business. Yeah, I agree. They, I agree. Stability is the team. Can't do nothing without you. You are the business. You are the yeah. Fortune 500. You are the one that makes things happen. Okay? Yeah. If you're not do fighting, nobody's employed. I repeat, if you ain't fighting, nobody getting paid. So they mm-hmm. got to do everything they got to do to make sure that you, one, earn your right mind, two, get everything you need. Yeah, pamper me. Okay? I'm about to go take some punches that you ain't. And you getting some of this money when I'm finished. So they got to make sure they take care of you the way you have to. And I'm telling you this from early. I'm telling all fighters, don't make you feel like your promoter is the business. Okay? No, I, you are the business. It's the other way around. Hell yeah, yeah. I, know that. I, I know that. I know that much. When I want something, I'll ask for it. Oh, I want to I'll, I'll tell them I need it. I love it's it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you make it happen. happen because it's your job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're allowed to be like, the thing is, it's like, things are especially in COVID things have been very difficult. You know mm. what I mean? But 
that's not an excuse. You know what I mean? A team needs stability. And whether you like it or not, whether it's physical or not, it's your job anyway. You know right. what I mean? And then any other employee be like, like, okay, I need this done. They'd be like, oh, well, mm, it's difficult. You'd be like, well, I can find somebody else. You know right. what I mean? It's your job. Yeah. Regardless if it's hard or not, it's your job. And you're right. Athletes do forget it. They do. We, they, we, we are... We are the reason why people have jobs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are. People forget it. People forget it. We all have more control than we think. Like, I'm not yeah. here because of you. No, you're here because of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, obviously, you have to perform because everybody has, you know, at the end of, you know, at the, end of the day, everybody has, uh, you know, requirements to fill, right? But we got to make sure we have a solid team. Stability, stability in the team will make the biggest difference in the next coming years. That's what we need. Stability. We, have, we need that. We have some, that's a necessity. And then it's gold, baby. Gold! Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yo, we that's got right. the one and only, man. The great one, man. The great yeah. one. Can you give us the proper pronunciation of your name so we don't butcher it, please? So, in English, it's Tamara Thibault. And in French, it's Tamara Thibault. So, pick and choose. All right. Be going with the English one because you said it too much. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that one. That one went by. Ooh, I love that. I, like, I can't do that good. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to say my piece, Francis from the Way In. I'm yeah. a huge fan of yours. Um, And I, everybody here on the Way In definitely are a fan of yours. We want to. We want to um, fight chat, do fight chats for your fights when you fight. We want to be able to watch you train. We want to um, watch you fight in person. We want to support you the best way we can here at the Wayne. You know what I'm saying? This is a home. We roll out the red carpet. You come up here. You got some shit you want to get off your chest. Get it off your chest. You got some shit you want to call somebody yet? You call them out. And especially if you got that great news about your career, definitely drop it here because we have a lot of people um, in Canada and in the world, you know what I'm saying, that be checking in on the news that we drop here. So this would be yeah, a good for sure. For sure. And uh, I appreciate it. And I thank you so much for coming through and keep that same energy, man. I want to see more young girls like you. You know what I'm saying? That want to approach a game. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you as a role model do your thing. Yo, uh, Sid, what up? Go ahead, Greg. Come to UK. But yeah, I'm going to repeat what Francis saying. Pleasure having you on the show. And we calling it now, all three of us, 2024 gold medal. You're bringing gold it home, medal, man. Baby. Yeah. And everybody gold don't medal. forget, man, Canada's first black female boxing Olympian. So we got to always mention that and put that out there. Pleasure yes. having you on the show and come back whenever. And um, the door is always wide open. Great. Thank you, guys. Appreciate being here. Thank you for having me. And b- before you go, before you go, before you go. Hold on. Before you go. <laughs> there you go ladies and gentlemen the first yeah black female boxing olympian tomorrow tebow i call it what up though yeah man history maker right there we love that yeah, a lot of good um a lot of good um uh comments towards it, man. Lots of salutes, lots of everybody backing her, and definitely we got to get the country more behind, you know, not just her, but the whole program. So we love that. Definitely their pleasure having Miss Tamara Tebow on the show. Now, because we, we were so excited, Greg. Um yeah. we're gonna put in the description when we drop the video, you know what I'm saying, where you can follow her on social media. Um yeah. I'm gonna pull up her social media actually, right? Let me see. Let me pull up her social media. Yeah, well, right. if you go on our IG, you know, you'll see her picture there. Her um social media is tagged to that. But we also, like Francis said, man, we'll tag it in the bottom there for everybody. So you could definitely follow her. She's gonna make some history, so you don't want to miss it. Oh, she definitely making history. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, talking like how she's talking, absolutely. And I love it, man. I love it. And if you guys have not, I repeat, Greg, maybe you say, maybe they listen to you if you say, it, man. Maybe they listen to you if you say. It. If you haven't done it already, hit the subscribe button. Help us build this channel. Help us build the boxing community because it does help with the growth and the visibility of the show and help us get to our goal of 1,000 followers. That's our goal for right now, but we're going to get there really, really soon with your help. So just continue to do that. Hit that bell icon so you know exactly when we go live, you don't want to miss any of the content. Anytime we drop a new video, you don't want to miss it. So definitely do that. And like I say, we're on Instagram at the Wayne Boxing. We're on Twitter at Wayne Boxing One. 
and the website you see there, the wayneboxing.com, where we got links to every platform that we're on, whether you want to listen or watch, you know, check us out all over the place. And listen, there's still a little bit of time left in the show. You could call in 914-205-5532. If there's anything you want to say quickly, you know, get it off, weigh in, do what the show says, like I always say. And there is her social media right there, Tamara Tebow. You can hit her up on IG and you see Tam's Corner. You want to get to know her a little bit better, you know, click on that and um, learn a little bit more about, like we said, the first black Olympic um, female boxer for Canada. So definitely hit her up. 2024 